I got that's, goosebumps from head to toe, man. That's once in a lifetime. It is. Guys, 19, 1964 Ford GT40 prototype chassis GT104 factory race car lightweight chassis finished third at Daytona in 65. Talk about some of the hardware in this car. We haven't covered it much. You talked about the history and the aerodynamics of the car. Shelby supplied the high winded 289 small block V8. Coletti T37 four speed transaxle. Weber carburetors. Those are the 48 IDA Weber carbs. Four of them on top of there. Four dual throw Webers. Girling supplied the 11 and a half inch four wheel disc brakes. This was all state of the art and high tech. And we are in the millions. Yes, you heard me right. Millions. Five million dollar bid on this car. This car is the result of a not so friendly grudge match that Ford lost. Henry Ford II, universally known as the Deuce within Ford Motor Company, decided in the 1960s he wanted to own Ferrari by hook or by crook. They put millions of dollars into a mega deal that was supposed to make Ford the owner of Ferrari after Ferrari won all the Le Mans titles from 1960 to 1965. And then the bottom fell out of the deal. Henry Ford II couldn't put it together and he was left holding the bag and he was not happy about it. So he decided he was going to target them. So he teamed up originally with John Wire and, and, and primarily a British team to put this car together. And then in 1964, Carroll Shelby took it over when it was not as successful as they wanted and they went on to win Le Mans in 1966, 67, 68, and 69. Henry Ford tried to buy Ferrari and I guess they had kind of a verbal deal. He did. And, and when they, that fell think, through, he was not Ford got mad. Out, right? He took it very personal. Ford yeah. got mad and told Shelby, we are going to beat Ferraris yep. at their game, and it was this car that started it. Yep. I think Enzo just turned his back and walked away on that one. Yeah. There is a famous story where he walked out of the room and simply kind of threw Ford under the table. And I can't yep. go into too much detail because I can't verify that it's absolutely true. But you're right. There was a big grudge at stake here. 6.5 million is the current bid. And one of the names that gets lost in all this is Eric Broadley, the designer of the Lolo, which is what the Ford GT is based on. Right. They wanted Eric to be part of the deal. And Carol Shelby used to love to tell the story about how Eric Broadley said, I can't deal with the politics. I'm out of here. <laughs> and there was a lot of that back in the day. I say between seven and eight, the reserve comes off and we see it happen. I think we're getting close here, guys. Six point seven million. Mark Delzell asking for seven million. You heard the crowd react. Seven. Danis says it's going to take seven million to buy it. Is that what you caught, Scott? I think, yeah, that's exactly what he said. Thousands of people crammed into the Reliance Center. People standing in the grandstand. I'm standing and people all around. Will they please start the engine one more time instead of pushing it out? If I beg, I'm not above that. That bundle of snakes exhaust system is a literal work of art. It is. Not only the way that it sounds, but the way it looks as well. Did you see how the driver had a little difficulty there with the clutch? That is a tight, tight racing clutch, and it wanted to kind of pop out on it. Racing clutches are extremely unfriendly if you've not dealt with them before. They're a nightmare. 
Any question now why Ford reintroduced the Ford GT? Oh, yeah. The value of these original yeah. cars and the amount of respect and and uh, provenance that yeah. they possess. Yeah. You guys know where the 40 came from? I mean, GT is Grand Touring. We all know that. Yeah, yeah it's the, the height, height of the, of the car. car. The height of the car. Yeah. When it was uh, converted from the metric system, that was the regulations in FIA Le Mans racing. And so they said, oh, yeah, I know. Hey, let's call it the GT40. Boom. Continuing to work it, 6.85 million, and the reserve has still not been met. Dana Meekin back there, Frank on the telephone, Wade Shouter on the phone, Tim Phillips back there. Plus years of televised Meekum auctions, this is a record on air price for a car at a Meekum auction. Seven, and who knows, we might not be done yet, but yeah. at least seven million. Start it up. Go ahead. Go ahead. I dare you. Well, just walk up there and tell them to turn it on. It's Wade Souter and Frank Meekum both with phone bidders. It looks like Wade is conceding to Frank. Yep. want to hear the car again please can you there drops the hammer and that only means one thing seven million dollars 